you may not want to own it. You may be like, it's too common. There's going to be too many of them, but you want to drive it. So two things that I've never done before, never filmed in my bathroom and I've never grown a beard. Well, we're going to correct one of those today because today's video sponsor, Brio, is presenting the Beardscape. And if you guys have a beard or you don't have a beard and you want to grow a beard, you have to understand that beard people take beards very seriously and they go spend lots of money at barbers and sometimes it's nice to be able to do it yourself at home and that's where Brio is here to help. The Beardscape has a strong motor and sharp blades that cut extremely well. And if you're hairier than Chewbacca, they've got an amazing long-lasting battery life with the display. It offers versatile cutting range with millimeter length control and RPM options. Every Beardscape comes with a two-year warranty and amazing customer service. And when you purchase today, you're going to get the Zero Blade, which is designed to cut really close for accurate edging and lining up. Fair warning, don't try to use it for body hair or body trimming because it doesn't quite work like that. And let's just take my word on it. So to all my bearded fans out there that like a good product and a good value, time to click the link in the description. You may have a razor you like, you may have not found a razor that you like yet. Now it's time to try them out because you know what? If you don't like it, you could send it back. They give you a 60 day full money back guarantee. So it's hard to go wrong. They're also going to give you the $25 zero blade free of charge when you get your beard scape. So you get to do that fine trimming and take care of the rest of your beard anytime you want. And if you don't like it, you send it right back. Rob Ferretti, click the link in the description. Try them out today. All right, everybody. Rob Ferretti here and Chevrolet. You know, good old Chevy, been around forever. They're getting a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be Ferrari right now. And there's a huge change in the car market in that a lot of companies are switching over to electric and there's fewer and fewer pretty let's just say exciting cars coming out, but there are even exciting launches with electric cars, right? Like the electric Hummer. That's cool. I want an electric Hummer. Whatever it is, the entire car market's buck nutty right now. Like there's people asking crazy money for everything, which tempts people to then sell their car, right? Just one of those things. But it also breeds a whole class of middlemen that just want to say like, all right, we got demand. Let's jack up demand by start grabbing all these cars that we don't want just to make a buck to now control the amount of volume of inventory and then have people pay them for them standing in line or whatever the situation is. Well, Chevrolet is not having it. And this is good because the Z06 is, I'll focus on the Z06 because I'm excited for it. I think everybody's excited for it, right? The new Chevy Z06, if you're a Ferrari guy, Lamborghini, any sports car guy, is like, yeah, like you may not want to own it. You may be like, it's too common. There's going to be too many of them, but you want to drive it. Like everybody wants to like, well, yeah, you toss me the keys. I'll take that thing for a rip because it just looks fun. It sounds fun. Everything about it screams like this is a good time. And Chevrolet realizes this and they're like, all right, dealers, we know what's going on out there, right? Like we understand that you want to make money and by doing so, you're violating our terms of agreement, that you're violating your contract with us to represent our brand because all the dealers are individually owned. And we can't prevent you from doing this because you're not supposed to, but if you do it, you hurt our reputation, you, you hurt the brand altogether, you ruin the customer experience. It's just not cool, but you're looking to make a quick buck, but it's going to cost you because we're going to pull all your other allocations. We're going to shift your allocations. So what does that mean? That means like, You've got no connection to Chevy, like you're, or, or you're a reseller, you're a wholesaler, you got a guy at the dealership's going to sneak you some cars. That's going to screw the entire dealership. And dealers are going to have to be real, or they should be very concerned about this because they're going to be losing allocations. So say you're a dealership, you've got whatever, you, you piss off GM, right? Like it's like you get caught flipping cars or marking them up to make a couple extra bucks at the point of sale, and then you're going to lose the entire back end. It's like, good, I'm glad you made that $25,000 there because you're losing $600,000 in sales and pulling all your Corvettes. And now it's like, oh, that was a pretty stupid move. The $25,000 doesn't look so good anymore. And then there's always a way around it. Like this, this is where like GM is becoming Ferrari. Ferrari's got this. 
Ferrari's like, we got this under control. And, and more so, the only real difference here is that Ferrari's always got new models coming out that people are clamoring to get because it's sort of a status symbol. GM doesn't have that. Like, it, the Corvette's a status symbol in, in certain markets, but not in, like, the ultra-high end. It, 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 it competes on the, on the scale with the Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but it doesn't compete in the driveway, if that makes sense. So they don't have that shtick that, like, we're going to take the next car. You, you, like, you go buy a Ferrari, you flip the Ferrari. Great. What does Ferrari do? They never sell you another Ferrari. That's a problem because, like, there's a line of people to buy Ferraris. So now, like, once you get in good with a dealer that your allocation gets taken, gets processed, like, you're in a pretty good mood that, like, all right, like, I've built up some credit with my dealership, so now that I'm able to get a car within a reasonable time frame. I may not get the first one because I understand there's guys that have been doing this longer, spending more money, but I'll, I'll keep getting in-demand stuff. Chevy is coming out with a Z06. This may be somebody's one and done. Like, I see an opportunity to flip it. I'm going to throw the dealer five grand in cash on the back end. I'm going to get it, and I'm going to send it out the door. I'm going to have my wife order the car. I'm a dealership. They're going to know there's one weakness to this, and this may impact people that have nothing to do with it, and it's going to suck. If you deal with a dealer that's not on top of their game, and you've got an order for a Z06, they may lose that. So, like, everybody, you got 50 people waiting to get Z06s from a dealership. If the dealer screws up, your allocation is gone. Here's your money back. Sorry, I can't deliver the car. Egg on my face. That's going to kill that individual dealer's reputation, not Chevrolet. Because Chevrolet is saying, we're doing this to protect everybody. We're not marking the cars up. We're not charging $200,000 for these cars, even though we know that may be the market price when these come out. Like, they may be selling for $50,000 over. And, and to be honest, if the Z06 is perfect, right? If it's an awesome car, hits all the notes all around, I'd put it at a buck fifty, and I called this with the NSX. I said the NSX is not a two hundred and twenty thousand dollar car, but for a buck and a quarter, you can't go wrong. The car's been worth a buck and a quarter every day since. Not because of me, but that's just because of where it belonged. The Corvette Z06, it's going to deliver a whole hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of enjoyment. I see that if uh, if they can do it, they're not going to sell them for one hundred and fifty grand. So that leaves all of this dealer markup and and uh, people flipping and everything like that. But if they do that and they, they play the games, like everything that you can think of, right? How do I get around this? Well, uh, I'll have my wife buy it and I own the dealer. Then I'll just mark it up and sell it. The cars come with this uh, tracker, right? Like, and, and Chevy, it depends on how much they want to enforce this. This could be all talk, right? But these cars have trackers built in. It's called a VIN number. So when you go resell your car, they're going to see the VIN number like, all right, now we've got one from this dealership. And it's inevitable, right? Like somebody's going to, for whatever reason, they buy it, they drive it 300 miles and they see the opportunity and they make a buck. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to buy another Chevy. Who cares? And they're going to make their 30, 40, 50 grand because these are also not necessarily the eccentric billionaires going out to get the cars. These are just regular guys that want to get a car and then they see the opportunity to make money. They'll take that money and go buy a, an old Z06 also still have a Z06, still have their Chevy product, but it was now free. So I can see that happening, but Chevy will see the pattern. All right, this dealership has 10% that we see on the secondary market. That dealer's a problem. Pull the, pull the allocations or pull 50% of the allocations. So now it's a crapshoot as to whether or not you are going to get the car that you think you're getting through the dealership, no matter how good of a relationship is. So it's really up to you. And if it was too easy to get an allocation through a dealership that you've never dealt with, then you may want to second guess that. And there are ways for a manufacturer to get around this, right? How, let's, let's just play both sides. A manufacturer can lease the car for a year or two. Hey, we're not going to sell you the car. We're only going to lease it to you. Now, are you going to give somebody money for a car that's a lease to maybe be able to buy out the lease? But if Chevy smells something, they're going to pull it back at the end of the lease. So now you're buying a car from somebody that they don't own because it's owned by the manufacturer still. That's a way around it. And I could see manufacturers doing that with hyper cars and other stuff like that. But then you get the guys that are like the Ford GTs. The guys are buying them. Hey, I like common thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in my company in Montana. Then all they do is sell the company. So they've now gotten around their, their purchase agreement to not sell 
by reselling the company to the next guy. So the next guy is paying market value. This guy's selling it, never really driving it, never taking ownership of it, just by putting it in their company name. So like that's a way around it. So I didn't sell it. Like it's still registered. You sold it to company ABC Cars. ABC Cars still owns the car. So I didn't do anything wrong. Now, a year later, two years later, two years later, whenever my lockup periods, I can change the company name. I can move it somewhere else. I can register it personally, whatever you want to do. But you technically you've sold the car. But I think uh, GM is smarter than that. But this is this is sort of a test to, as to whether this is lip service or not. And I understand how it hurts the brand. And if they start pulling allocations from dealership, it's going to be a shitstorm, and everybody's going to hear about it, right? Everybody's going to hear about the 50 people that were waiting in line for a car that didn't do anything wrong, that now aren't getting cars because Chevy pulled the allocation. And that's all going to fall squarely on the dealerships. It's going to be weird. Uh, it's I. 50% of me wants to be like, yes, I believe it. It's going to happen. And the other 50% is like, GM's not going to do it. So we'll find out. Only time will tell. But don't try to get shysty. Like if, if you burn your dealership by saying, yeah, yeah, buying it. I love this car. I'm buying it. I'm specking it out. And you turn around and sell it. You could be screwing not only the dealership, but all the other people in line to get a car from that dealership to make money for yourself. At the end of the day, people are generally greedy and they'll do that. But you shouldn't. Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching. I'm excited for the Z06. I'm excited for everything. I can't wait for this car market to normalize because the the rise and fall of the middleman is just like I get the opportunistic people, but like you want them to go away.